The WHO have uh, pretty much stated uh, accurately that approximately 75% of the Americans are overweight and obese, 75%. Of course, the National Health Institute disputes that and says, no, it's only two-thirds of the Americans. Well, I don't know about that part. But in any way, we are talking about 130 million Americans that are obese and uh, overweight. But the really critical part of this whole thing is that the statistics are showing that the children in America is growing at epidemic level. 77% of American children are overweight and nearly 17% are obese. Now, this is a tremendous increase, 300% on the children. But in the last 20 years, we're talking about the average population in America have grown more than doubled in the overweight and obese category in the last 20 years. So in this last few years, we're talking about this 20 years, a tremendous program of fat-free products. Now, with all that fat-free products, and we continue to grow, there must be some kind of a problem occurring. But I wanted to share with you some alarming statistics that for the first time, we're looking at today's children being the first generation of Americans whose life expectancy may be shorter than of their parents. That's because we are looking at children with at least two or more lifestyle risks that are embedded in them at the age of seven. So we are absolutely gassed by what is going to happen to our life expectancy when Surgeon General Satcher have stated that overweight, if you are overweight at 40 years old, you will lose approximately three years of life. If you're obese at over 40, you will lose approximately seven years in your life expectancy. And obese at 20, you're going to lose over 13 years of life expectancy. Now, let's look at the horrible problems that we have been facing in the last few years. We have a terrorism attack at 9-11 that killed nearly 3,000 people in, in a minute or a few minutes. We are at a terrorism of, let's say, the narcotic, heroin, and cocaine. Well, that's killing about 20,000 people a year. But we have really a huge big terrorism from within. The problem is that we are losing now at the rate of 400,000 people dying every year due to causes of overweight and obesity. It is becoming now parallel to smoking. It is second only to smoking and very closely going to be within the next five to ten years overpass smoking as being the number one cause. The National Institutes of Health did a very interesting research. This is with the Framingham Heart giving you a look at the development of obesity. They, did, they picked thousands of individuals, men and women, at their 20, 25 years of age, and they found that they were all within normal weight. They followed them for 30 years. And at the age of 50 to 55, they went back and did an, an, an evaluation and found that 90% of the men were over, overweight and obese, and 70% of the women were overweight and obese. Now, this does not bode well for the future of this country. But I wanted to share with you that is the obesity, really, of us having all of these fat-growing cells? And the research has been shown pretty much that you are born with a very specific number of fat cells. And those, that number of fat cells actually does not change throughout your life very much. But what happens is that as we continue to overindulge in our lifestyle, we actually grow these cells 
into larger and larger in size, which is what causes the overweight and obesity that we're looking at. But what is it that actually fueling that? Because we actually just talked about the fact that the fat, the programs of fat-free of just about everything that you walk down the grocery store, you can actually see fat-free just about every product group. And yet, we continue to grow bigger and bigger. And what would you say is the reason? And here is a very interesting research for you that we have 43 Winster rats that had a choice between sugar water and cocaine water. And guess what they chose? 94% preferred sugar water. That is because the sugar creates such elevated brain dopamine that is highly addictive. And here we are now looking at just about every food group that you are eating. And primarily, not picking on vegetarians, but if you are a vegetarian looking at their diet consistency, they are actually eating more and more carbos and sugars. But what we're looking at is every cereal, practically, that you are having in the morning, which is the average typical American diet, having cereal, is primarily sugar-laden. So we're looking at the fact that the 25% at any given time, according to the journal, American Journal of Preventive Medicine, that 25% of men or, and up to 40% of women are trying to lose weight at any given time in America. And obviously not very successfully because up to 96% of those individuals that lose weight actually gain their weight back within three months of stopping their weight. So, what we're looking at is different kinds of overweight and obesity. And Dr. Joel, who spoke just before me, was giving a rather spectacular uh, documentation of the products that our Irvinja is doing. But I'm going to be, be focusing slightly differently in a different direction. But what we are doing is essentially looking at pharmaceuticals as well as different programs that are rather limited where they have not been very successful, obviously because otherwise we would not have the problems that we are presently incurred. 